Happy Friday. Getting a little personal, are you good about doing your annual doctor checkups? What if instead of doing your checkup, you had something on you that read your key statistics? Things like blood pressure or blood sugar. Then, if or when something key changes, your doctor was notified, you can come up with a plan. Pretty cool, right? Well, that's the dream behind tattoos that would stick on us and share data on what's going on in our body. We're not there yet, but here's the 411 on biosensor tattoos. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today, we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. You probably have used a biosensor and don't know it. Ever take a rapid COVID test? At its essence, this is a biosensor. This is a device that uses a biological detector to sense whether a specific substance or molecule called the analyte is there and communicate how much there is. When we say biological detector, we mean something like an enzyme, antibody, or maybe you've heard of a protein receptor. These are things that have some reaction with the molecule that's being tested for. So if there is a reaction, it tells you the molecule is there. In the case of the COVID test, the physical test is the device. The antibodies are the biological detector, and you are testing for the presence of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the analyte. If you have a specific threshold of the virus, it communicates to you via the pink line. A COVID test is a more simple biosensor, with other examples being a glucose reader, smartwatches, or biosensors. It can even be used to test for bacteria and food products. More advanced biosensors contain electronics that transmit and translate data into something that can be read. For example, in smartwatches, light is used for the continuous monitoring of changes in the blood and the oxygen flow, which is then translated into your blood oxygen results that you view. Not to state the obvious, but the challenge in making biosensors into tattoos is in creating a mini electrical system that contains a biosensor and a material that is portable, small, and non-invasive to the skin. This means that each part of the device, like the part that is translating the data, has to be flexible and ensure the data isn't sending false results because the device is moving with our bodies. Think about the devices in our phone that transmit data and how rigid they are, or the idea of an electrical circuit that is the thickness of a tattoo. Professor John A. Rogers, who was at the University of Illinois at the time, introduced the idea that a device as thin as a tattoo could be an epidermal electronic system that can capture and transmit biological information. While not like tattoos that would be inked permanently to the body, these are tattoos that in some cases are applied directly like the temporary tattoos you get as a kid using water and pressure. What distinguishes biosensor tattoos from other devices that were invented prior and applied to the skin, like body temperature strips, is that they can collect data continuously and transmit that data. They're thin and flexible, they aren't harmful to the body, and they go directly on your skin. Professor Rogers and others' breakthrough was in combining biology and electronics by creating serpentine-shaped circuits in an adhesive patch. In 2017, professors at the University of Texas Austin came together to develop an alternative device for an at-home EKG, which patients have to use when doctors are trying to diagnose cardiac irregularity. They wanted to develop something that was a lot smaller and easier for patients. Akinwande is a specialist in materials that are one to two atoms thick, and Lou is a specialist on epidermal electronics, which is what most biosensor tattoos are. This led them to consider building a graphene tattoo, as it is an electrical conductor and is extremely tough. Graphene is a one atom thick layer of graphite, which is composed of carbon bonded in a hexagonal shape. The shape might not sound like a big deal, but it actually makes it the strongest material ever recorded, 40 times stronger than a diamond. For their EKG-like application, they grew some graphene, coated it with a stretchy polymer, cut it to make spirals in between the graphene, and then apply the tattoos. They saw that graphene is able to pick up changes to the electrical patterns, which can then be used to interpret what's going on. Graphene also has an ability to conform to the skin, getting more up close and personal than typical medical devices, and it's transparent, so it looks like skin. All of these qualities, plus the fact that some types of graphene are non-toxic, makes it an ideal material. Existing tests for cortisol are often costly and contain some limitations. I once did the saliva test, which was extremely involved, requiring four tests throughout the day under certain conditions. Measuring cortisol, though, is extremely important as it is related to or can indicate various health conditions. Multiple labs are on the race to figure out how to leverage sweat and graphene tattoos to detect cortisol through the use of antibodies that bind with the cortisol and interfere with the graphene's conductivity. Based on the interference, they believe they can then collect information on the presence of cortisol. Measuring blood pressure today is very similar to the last 50 years because it's cost effective. It's the cuff they make you put on at the beginning of every doctor's appointment. Graphene tattoos can measure something called bioimpedance, which measures your body's opposition to the electrical current in your body's tissues. It's typically used to measure your body composition, which medical facilities would otherwise do through a specialized scale. Because there's a relationship between bioimpedance and blood pressure, the tattoos could be used to infer blood pressure, but unfortunately this correlation varies per person. So engineers need to better leverage machine learning to make this option scalable. This episode in particular gave me such an appreciation for the engineer scientists and others who are pioneering these crazy technologies and all the more reason to pursue a vision you have for some advanced technology because there is no limit. See you next week.